Well, you have to keep the government open. I mean, if people want to close the government, it only makes them weaker. Why would they want to stop paying the troops or stop paying the border agents or the Coast Guard? I don't understand how that makes you stronger. I don't understand what point you're trying to make. Yes, of course, it's always about the troops, isn't it? They want to stop paying the troops. Joining me now, great congressman from the state of Texas, Chip Roy. Chip, why do you want to stop paying the troops? Well, Jesse, uh, you know, look, this is one of the things they pull out every single time that we have a shutdown fight, every single time. It won't just be the troops, right? They'll start talking about, you know, that we're pulling food out of the mouths of orphans. They'll start talking about not, not paying border patrol. They'll they'll pull out all the stops uh, because, you know, they, they ignore the reality that the government stays open almost entirely, that they'll deem most employees essential, that everybody's going to ultimately get paid that yes, the real debate is whether or not there's going to be a delay in some folks' pay, which we don't take lightly. These are real. You know, in many cases, there are a lot of patriots, particularly our troops. Uh, but at the end of the day right now, we have one leverage point to try to force this administration to stop screwing each and every American that's watching this right now, and you know it's true. And we've got to use this power to try to force change. Uh, what's happening at the border is completely unacceptable. What's happening at DOJ is unacceptable. What's happening at the Department of Defense in terms of being social engineering is unacceptable. So we've got to force change and, and uh, now's the moment. And I'm not gonna listen to, you know, we should have done, we should have passed bills in July. So don't, don't whine about whether we're gonna have a government shutdown. The question really simply is this, will Joe Biden choose to shut down the border or shut down the government? That ought to be the message of every Republican right now. Chip, as it stands with the GOP, where are we with all this? I know where the commies are. I'm not worried about them. Where is the House GOP right now? So you said it. it's important you gloss over, though, that point about the commies, right? And never before in the history of this country have we ever had such a deadlocked group of people, in this case, every single Democrat in the United States right. House, that is utterly unwilling to work with us to actually stop insanity with the executive branch trampling the rights of Americans. Never before, it has never been like this. Now, we have Republicans who are basically having the actual fight, the actual debate. And look, if I'm being actually grace, giving some grace here, getting 221 people, you gotta keep 215, 16, 17 votes. That's not easy, I get it. But Democrats always find a way to do it. And it's about damn time the Republicans finally do it. And so the state of play is this. Uh, I wanted to move a a uh, very temporary 30-day funding mechanism that would have cut spending by 80%, secured the border, and made sure our defense was funded, but eliminated all the woke garbage, right? The critical race theory, the chief diversity officers, the transgender surgeries. Um, yeah, we had a disagreement. Some of my colleagues thought, nope, no way, I'm not touching a CR. And you know what? I respect their position. We need to move appropriations bills. We're trying to move those. Uh, over the weekend, I was meeting here. I was working. I was on the Rules Committee. We passed a package to move four bills. Hopefully tonight we will start that process. There's still some disagreement. For example, there's $300 million in the DOD package for Ukraine. I don't believe we ought to continue throwing money at Ukraine, but I'm more concerned about the 20 billion or 30 billion or 50 billion supplemental than 300 million that's been in there since we did an agreement with them to denuclearize in 1994. I would probably go forward, but I got some colleagues who very legitimately under, don't wanna give another dollar to Ukraine. So I'm telling the speaker and the leadership, take it out. What the hell is the problem? Just get rid of it. Have a separate debate on Ukraine. Let's keep this simple. We're trying to make sure we move the border package through. We're trying to make sure we can get the train moving down the tracks and try to get to a place where we can send a loud message to the American people that we're for funding troops, we're for funding border patrol, but we're not for giving any money to this administration to continue to be at war with the American people. That's the truth. We need to stop it again. Let's make the message simple. Joe Biden can shut down the border or Joe Biden can shut down the government. Chip, can you explain the Ukraine insistence from people on our side? Regardless of whatever, wherever you fall on this vote, I understand that. But why are so many people on the right still so obsessed with this Russia-Ukraine thing? Not that I'm pro-Russia or pro-Ukraine or really care, but most American people do not care about this issue one way or the other. They don't care at all. And yet Republicans, like half the party, acts like this is the issue on everyone's mind. It's a really weird disconnect. Just let me, ask, let me ask you a question. Do you think it is a coincidence that Zelensky was here this past week right as we're figuring out how to fund our government? And that the last time he was here, 
was last December, right before we were funding our government? Of course, it's not a coincidence. How much do you think many of my Republican colleagues in particular, but both sides of the aisle, are more concerned about what the various uh, lobbyists and defense complex people think in this town in order to continue the wheels of the defense machinery going, right? Because that's what it's all about. If you have perpetual conflict, you have perpetual contracts and can perpetual you know, defense spending. In my view, we need to get very simple here. What is in the interest of the American people? I've authored a number of letters with my friend J.D. Vance in the Senate to the Department of Defense trying to hold them accountable. They say, hey, we have a full accounting of everything. Well, you know what? We have $31 billion. We don't even know where the hell it went. We sent a letter just yesterday saying to the Department of Defense, answer these questions. I want NATO to step up. I want an accounting of every dollar we've spent, and I want a mission of what we're trying to accomplish. Until I see those things, shut the hell up about Ukraine, secure the damn border, do your job, stop doing the bidding of a bunch of lobbyists in this godforsaken town. That's what we're dealing with right now. Chip, shoot me straight about something. $33 trillion in debt, obviously you're well aware of it. It's something you talk about a lot. Nothing else really matters if we have this horrible debt crisis that ends our standard of living as we know it. Okay, we have this big budget talk right now. How many billions do these people get? And how many billions do these people get? Do any of these people, any of them besides you and like four others, ever bring up the fact that we're $33 trillion in debt and we're talking about paper money when it comes to every dime here? Yeah, and what they do is they hide behind mandatory spending, they hide behind Medicare, Social Security. Frankly, a lot of now the veteran spending for burn pits, it's all mandatory. It's already just baked in. And they hide behind that and they say, guys, that's the only way we're really going to solve the debt crisis. To which I say, okay, where's your proposal? Where's your campaign? Where are you going out there and saying, you know what? I'm fine saying we're going to do an across the board cut to the entire government of 1% a year for the next decade, grow the economy and get us out of debt. Can you do that? Oh, well, no, no, no. I, I don't know. I don't want to talk about Social Security, Medicare. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what I'm focusing on right now, since we don't have that on the table. We're trying to actually cut the weaponized bureaucracy that's killing the American people, killing our ability to prosper and grow, taking away our freedom, targeting Mark Houck in Philadelphia, targeting Scott Smith in Loudoun County, leaving our borders wide open for people to die from fentanyl. We're having an absolute crisis in this country where the American people can no longer have the American dream, and we're pissing around in this town worrying about things like legislating on appropriations and bullcrap that nobody understands. When we need to just stand up in the breach, stop spending money we don't have to fund a government that's at war with the American people. That is, in my opinion, what we need to do. Look, I will figure out how to compromise. I'll take an exit ramp to get the job done. But damn it, we got to actually be serious about it. And I don't want to hear any more finger pointing by the Speaker of the House or by, frankly, any of my colleagues on the left, right, or middle. Let's do our job. Stop funding a government at war with the American people. Secure the damn border now. Yeah. Thank you, Congressman. Come back soon. I appreciate it. Thanks, Jesse. Take care.